Well, thanks for staying with us on the show this morning as we look to review some headline features. I'm also going to be joined in by the two prominent individuals as we look to review Nigeria's developments on the, the last 365 days of President Bola Metinibu. Uh, joining me on the program this morning is Prince Godswill Edward, fondly called Prince Seven. Thank you. And I'm also joined by Alhaji Abdul Abiola. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, as we look to run through the papers this morning, do be reminded that you too can be a part of the conversation by joining our online stream on our webpage on www.adbntv.com forward slash live, where you can express your thoughts, comments, and opinions. But we also advise that you be objective about it while refraining from using inflammatory or inciting comments. So we have an objective discussion about where we are as a nation with the hope of moving Nigeria forward. Now, in the last 48 hours, starting in Lagos, President Bola Metinibu commissioned the 700 kilometers Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway and other projects. Today, he will be commissioning the Bola Metinibu Southern Parkway in the FCT. Uh, but most of the conversations greeting the front page is about how far democracy has gone. And this is owing to the position of the Senate for local government autonomy. I I'll come to you because you have done a lot with youths at the grassroots in Cross River State. Uh, and most times when the subject of local government autonomy is mentioned, it is mentioned from the perspective of federal allocations to local government chairman. So I I'd like to find out before we look at the papers this morning, beyond the legislative provisions for local government autonomy is financial autonomy. How important is this in the development of, at the grassroots? Quite a big development. You know, you can understand that our country is blessed. And there are three, you have the federal, you have the state, you have the local government. It's very important for all sectors and all systems, as it has been instituted to be functional. The local government chairman shouldn't have to depend on what comes from the state or the directives of the state or the interest of the governor to be able to give dividends of democracy to his people. I believe so much that our local institutions must be strengthened. I believe so much that the grassroots needs to be strengthened, where everybody's doing the job, not you're being paid to go to local governments now. Sometimes you don't find local government chairmen, all of them are living in the headquarters. No, you return back to do the job. You know, and I feel that the autonomy, which is all I need, I think it's not something that should be difficult. It's how it was, and things should return back to status quo, where the local government is empowered to do the job. Now, you're the co-founder and president of the MQO Abiola Youth and uh, Sports and Youth Development in Africa, much in the memory of your father. And one thing that is evidently missing at the grassroots is sport infrastructures. You can't count on the tip of your finger how many of these youths who are in local government council areas have access to a basketball court. At most they have is a football field. Do you think that beyond the broad conversations of development at the grassroots is intentional investments in critical sport infrastructures at the grassroots level? Yeah, I totally agree with what you just said. It's, um, it's important that we invest in our future. And we've just said that the youth is the future of Nigeria. You know, in a country, you look for young, talented people to join you so you can have something called a concern. You know, some have investments in sports or in, in, in windows. I call them windows. Windows for possibilities. A young person is, you know, is not your friend. So in that sense, it's fluid. You, know, you, can, you can guide them, you can give them an experience of opportunities so that they can actually fulfill their own ambitions. My father was a prolific you know, um, when it came to helping the youth and the young people. I think he actually sent 29,000 people to school, paid for their school fees. You know, they, especially when it comes to sports, you know, a Biola um, base, you know, and that kind of press, um, press um, um, football team as well. So what, I, what I'm suggesting here is, yes, there is, there's a role for government to play, but then there's also a role for individuals to come in. We are all adults here. You know, the way my father was able to accomplish in his own time, if you could have abuelas in every region or even God knows how many abuelas have been lost based on the fact that they haven't been nurtured and nobody has even given, given them um, a second to just say, what do you want to do? What is these things will, um, will come into play. And that's why you can see um, in, in what I'm trying to do is trying to follow in my father's footsteps. I believe that, you know, it's not just in saying, but in the action. You know, you can always say something. You know, you can say that the Nigerian people are the, are the future of tomorrow. 
but this tomorrow they've been telling me when i was five years old about the future of tomorrow and that tomorrow hasn't come so i am suggesting that before they, they can keep telling me but then there's also a role that i have to play i'm also i also have agency in this so yes the children that are out there who are looking to to to, to progress and to to grow should please try to reach out to like-minded people around around them now uh, let's look at some of the highlight features whilst we clamor for infrastructural developments in nigeria it is more on the timeline of activities which has now been tagged projects galore outlining infrastructures to be flagged off slash commissioned by president bola metinibu and like i said in our introduction it began on sunday uh, today's activity is highlighted in the commissioning of Bola Tinibu Southern Parkway in the FCT. Uh, tomorrow is Inauguration Day in itself, the first year anniversary. And some of the critical projects to look out for would be the National Assembly Library Complex, the relaunch of a commercialization of the Abuja Light Rail, the Wuye Flyover Bridge, and uh, the Defense Intelligence Agency Headquarters. Well, going into the show, we'll also listen to some of the highlight features as enumerated by the president himself. But I'd like to come and get your perspectives of the development in the FCT, particularly. Uh, much credit has been given to the current minister of the FCT, Barristan Nason Wike. Uh, many ask what happened in the last years, in the last eight administrations. It almost seems as though critical road infrastructures were domiciled and dormant, much to the dismay of residents within the FCT. How would you judge? the infrastructure it's, it's very clear you know that um, the renewed hope agenda is determined and ready to take um, to give prosperity and renew the hope of nigerians you know as evident in the things that we can see and even the blind can hear you know because there's a lot of um, amazing conversations by say by residents in, in, of the fct about the state of things in, in the fct developments you can now pass through a lot of abandoned roads you know, a lot of bridges, you know, who have been brought back, you know, refurbishing, you know, old roads. And, and, and that's what we feel it's democracy. That's what we feel is leadership. That's what we feel is governance. When the people feel the pulse of the leader, the pulse of governance. So I feel that both the minister of the FCT and His Excellency, the commander in chief of the armed forces, our dear and beloved president, is doing the right thing and citizens can see. You know, when you say, oh, 100 DM, one year in office, you know, and you're hearing commissioning, you know, you're hearing about the NIA, and at least now there will be a conversation on NIA. Young people will get to know what NIA means. A lot of people don't even know what Nigeria is all about, but they are Nigerians. So when there's a development, it springs up conversations around something that educates and more informed Nigerians to, to wear the ammo of, 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 of passion, resilience, and, and, and that spirit of sportsmanship and patriotism for their country that, oh, we have a president that is working, we're in the FCT and we're saying things that have not happened, questions we've been asking over time, you know, has been answered. And I think that Nigerians are at peace and we can as well congratulate His Excellency on a one year in office with our chest knowing that he deserves that, that congratulations. And I'll come to you, Alhaji Abiola. It's more so on most of the, the respect given at the federal level to the direction of the current administration on the, what Prince Seven has much dubbed the Renewed Hope Agenda. But when you look at the sub-regionals, other state governors are also going to be celebrating their first year in office. We can't really say that most states have felt the dividends of democracy is much like we're seeing in the FCT and under the Renewed Hope Agenda. What's your call to state governors to improve upon their delivery of campaign promises to Nigerians who elected them into office? Well, my call is basically to all leaders, from His Excellency, the President of the country, congratulations again, and to all the other excellencies. But my, my appeal will be to all leaders. You know, I can see that work is yes being done, but I don't think we are t we're there yet. You know, it said renewed hope. It's renewed hope, and uh, um, what I'm hearing on the streets, uh, you know, they're not necessarily get to. I'm not getting that vibe that the the message is getting across. So we need to, you know, put it up another gear. We need to step it up. I know that Mr. The, the president said it. Like I think this was about ten months ago. He said, "You don't blame me. I asked for this job." He did. Now, if things are going at this, in this direction, I would suggest that the president is not the only one who asks for this job. Everybody he elected also have, has a role to play. The House of Assembly members have a role to play. You know, it's important that they understand that this 
situation that we have. Uh, this is a wonderful situation that we are, we are in now, where we can actually put things right. So let's try to do that, and let's do that in a in a speedy manner because we all know the way Nigeria is. After the, this next one year, it's basically election season, so we don't have much time left. Now information dissemination and the role of the media in further disseminating the achievements of the current administration have been on this court and uh, let's pick up some of the papers greeting the discourse this morning to look at print media's perspective on issues in nigeria we'll start with first the four a quartet of newspapers that look at the case for local government autonomies leading that discussion is the nation newspaper the daily trust the blueprint and the daily independent all of these four have a similarity in their lead stories. On the Nation newspaper, you'd find the lead story above the advertorial with an invitation by the FCT minister and the Minister of State uh, for the flag off of certain projects in the FCT. But beneath the masthead is the lead story. President Tinibu lists gains of Lagos Calabar Road. President Tinibu lists gains of Lagos Calabar Road. Much as also the focus on the next newspaper, the Blueprint. On the Blueprint newspaper, you'd find a similarity in that lead story. And uh, FG drags governors to court over local government autonomy. Uh, much on that coverage is also given on the Daily Independent as well. On the Daily Independent, you'd find the lead story with the catchphrase uh, beneath that as well as we continue to review those future headlines now more focus now is on an increased federal allocation in nigeria's history following comments made by president bola metini this is the first time that states are enjoying improved federal allocations but what like he said that spirit or message of renewed hope has not trickled down to the pockets and the lives of many nigerians do you feel like there is a bit of disconnect at that level I want to say that for me, don't forget that we're talking about um, over 200 and something million Nigerians. That, that's a large amount of population, um, six regions and um, 36 states and capital. So everyone, every leader of right, opinion leaders, um, individuals, businesses, you know, everybody must come together. It's a season, it's a clarion call. Let us fix Nigeria. Let us make Nigeria a better place. So whatever you're doing as a primary school teacher, improve on it with more audacity. You know, whatever you, you do as a police officer or a traffic warden on the road, improve on what you do. Let's begin to serve Nigeria better. So for me, I feel that the governors, you know, must do their job. And I, I speak from, I'm from Cross River, and I can feel that, yes, everybody, Rome was not built in a day. As progressives, we have that progressive mind that little drops of water makes an ocean, but you can as well increase the drops so that the drops can drop more. So I see my governor doing great work in Cross River, and I feel that, you know, it's not just I speak because I'm from Cross River, and I know that um, Senator Bassi added or two, you know, in the in, in the in the in the in the in the municipal council area in Calabar and even other states. I see them doing um, traffic lights and increasing the number of traffic lights in in Ogoja. They are doing in Ecom, you know. I you know, I'm aware that they are also going to do or are all doing already in in Ugep, you know, and in Calabar. So every path roads are being um, refurbished across the metropolis you know so, so people are happy but you can't give everybody everything at the same time all we are saying is that all leaders must come together now that there is that energy of intentionalism in everybody you're receiving more than you, than other previous governors in terms of allocation and let's not just look at just the allocation to what can we do in terms of generating ideas i always say that human resource has a lot to offer than a natural resource because even without the right human resource how do you manage the natural resources so let's look at the resources that every cross Siberian, every nigerian every human across the, our, our country has to offer and how we can tap from that resource now that there's a, more availability of resources it should be shared it should trickle around by developing systems and, and structuring institutions better and giving more energy and life in meaning let's be available leadership should be available we shouldn't we shouldn't demand for leadership and can't find leadership leadership offered itself to serve and we deserve that service as nigerians now let me come to you alhaji abiola in a week from now there would be the conference on uh, democratic governance in nigeria the journey so far it's going to also be a convergence of young persons i know you'll be there 
in shaping this conversation about governance. You're talking about elections coming for the 2027 elections in the next one year. A lot of planning preparations will be intensified by political parties and political actors as such. But we have very little time to dialogue on governance in itself in the Nigerian perspective. How important would this be for you to converge for this dialogue? Uh, this would be a this would be a critical and a crucial period. This is it's all hands on deck. I think my my brother said it best. You know we have to be intentional about this. You know as we are, like I said we are the future. Uh, apparently we are the future. I actually think the children my children are the future. But the bottom line is we need to be at the table. But before we can even go to the table to even ask for what to eat, we need to also discuss between ourselves what is important to us as a as a unit. You know, as as a community, is is you know, I, I, my father was was a champion of one thing, and I think he was more of Nigeria first. You know, I, I'm I'm hoping that this conference, you know, it's 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 named the Mandate Awards, and it's supposed to, you know, acknowledge those who actually fought for this democracy that we're all enjoying today, and you know, it's also supposed to rek uh, rekindle that spirit that we had in 1993. You know, I. I really believe that Nigeria's better days are ahead of us. You know, we, what we just need to do is, you know, open up the, the playing field. So let's, I, I agree that this is also a critical time for young-minded, um, constructive criticism to come into play. You know, like I said, you know, this, Nigeria is not going to go anywhere if we're all divided. We need to now start trying to find, you know, common, commonalities between ourselves. You know, I see that, um, you know, hopefully with this program and other programs that we have and planned, we should be able to get that message across that we're only going to do this if we stand together and we can only get further. I'll come to you as well. He mentioned something that is very critical. He says the fight for democracy. And over time now, many are asking, is this the democracy that Africa wants in line with the issues happening in other sub-Saharan countries where military junta has taken over? And we have some countries actually pulling out of the ECOWAS Committee of States. Do you think that Nigeria, as a big brother in that perspective, with our unbroken democracy ever since we came up from military rule, has been seen to live up to the dividends of democracy? As I'll speak now, as um, a professional, yeah, as, as, as um, a foreign service officer, I think I voluntarily retired from foreign affairs and foreign service to join politics. And I know the power of democracy is one of the things that drove me. There is no diplomacy if there's no strong foundation, and the strong foundation sits on democracy by strengthening institutions and all of that. And Nigeria plays a, a, a very big role, you know, we call the giant of Africa. It means that Africa is not going to arise until the giant of Africa arises. And, and like I speak, is the, the name Africa or Nigeria is not just in the nomenclature, it's not just a, a, geogra a geographical location, you know, it's not, not, not its people. Nigerians are its people, not the geographical location. So if we have a role to play and Africa is watching us and, you know, like you spoke about the ECOWAS and all, a lot of things are happening that are abnormal. There's a standard procedure when, when, the, when ECOWAS was set up, he had a direction, he had a mandate, you know. And when the African Union came together, he had a mandate, he had a, a structure. When Nigeria became an independent state, and the country, a federation, if you know, he had a mandate, he had, that's why we have constitutions. We must strengthen them through democracy because nobody's going to respect you if you don't know who you are. You know, you must know who you are, you must renew, have that renewed ability. That's why I'm quite excited, you know, you know, the leadership of His Excellency um, um, Ahmed Bola Tinibu, with that word as a leader, a leader is a prophet, is a king, a renewed hope. Let all Nigerians put shade their swords, abandon the, the problems. It's time to begin to fix Nigeria. And we must get Nigeria to begin to operate in, in a, based on our foreign policies. But our foreign policies will be more protected if we have internal policies that are democratically structured and strengthened institutions and we can move from there. I think we must all do our job. Now, in doing our job, the first point of call is this conference in a week from now. The youths have been often accused of not paying much attention to political issues. There's an apathy for elections amongst our youths these days. Is there hopes that this would beyond be a wake-up call to see youth to come to action? I know that the youth are ready. You know, what we're looking for now, what the youth lack is leadership. And that's why we're all rising. To first of all, lead ourselves. And if we can lead ourselves, we can lead at a leader generation. And collectively, we believe in synergy. And Abdullah Biola and the Prince Godfrey Edward Alliance. 
and a lot of other alliances with young people that has come together is because we want to bring a network together and build a strong base and begin to begin to serve the interest of our generation. We all are servant leaders. We all want what is good for Nigerian youth, but Nigerian youth must come together. And the excellence of the mandate, Democracy Award and Conference is for us to celebrate the value of democracy. That's what it stands and represents in our day and also the, 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 the efforts of our heroes past because we must understand the value of history as young people and also following track records. You know, we're not following track records to imitate everything, no, but there's a direction. Our forefathers have laid a foundation. How do we improve on that foundation? How do we strengthen that foundation? How do we defend that foundation? You know, value in exchange for vices. We must use what we have. You know, we must structure our minds and we must be able to say, come, we can do it. We are doing it and let's do it the right way. All right. Now, one thing that has also stood out the most in the recent debates with the federal government has been a living wage, an award to salaries at the end of the month that would actually cater for their needs amongst the cost of living. Uh, uh, one of the newspapers this morning, the Vanguard newspaper, uh, looks at that in its front page. The Vanguard is quite at the bottom of our discussion this morning, but let's bring it up so we get your perspective before we listen to President Bola Metinibu's speech at the ceremony yes, uh, on Sunday. It says in its lead story, Labour, private sector operators, beaker over minimum wage. Organised labourers, 497,000 naira, unrealistic says presidency adds affordability key to arriving at any figure nlc6 minimum wage for journalists in nigeria cautions against harassment by security agencies now it's in the lead story this morning it's been a debate the last i checked the federal government said fifty-seven thousand naira is its best offer that was following an offer earlier of fifty-four thousand naira now, the current minimum wage of 30,000 naira that had been awarded has long expired. The announcement continues to draw much of a breakdown in dialogue between organized labor and the federal government. If you were invited to be part of the tripartite committee on the negotiation of minimum wage, what would be your call to labor and the federal government? You know, I think uh, I'll come from a very different perspective. Uh, please give me the ability to speak and hear my, my thoughts and concern. And then that's why you said, if I'm called. You see, the problem is that Nigerians have refused to understand the value of self-development. We're too dependent, you know, and we, we believe that it's a right. We're too entitled as a people. You know, skills development and talent development, we all are talented, apart from being a classroom teacher, you know, and apart from being a police officer, or apart from being um, um, a, um, a health worker. There are potentials in you that can also help to generate other revenues and opportunities. So what the federal government needs is to create more platforms. You know, when they have more platforms, even as an organization, they, 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 the NLC should be able to begin to get support and grants and opportunities and also help develop the, the caliber of workforce they are building. Nobody should depend on the government. We all are the government. We all are here to build a better society and a better Nigeria. Whatever the government has to offer, fine. We should instead invest more in strengthening structures, not what we end. The, what we end will come to us as long as the structures are available, as long as there are platforms for our children. Why do they need more so they can be able to solve their domestic problems and responsibilities? So it means that if you have a football player as a son because the stadium is open to the football player, not that the stadium is only meant for political campaigns and church crusades, it was built. That's a platform to harness the energy of young people. If the energy of young people is not probably harnessed, it becomes a negative energy because youth have energy, regardless whether you want to accept it or not. It's not a place to convert the energy and help streamline that energy into positive effects that can help in turn develop Nigeria. Now you see them carrying guns instead of balls, and that's why we launched the Give Them Ball Not Gun initiative under the Footprint 7 Youth Development Initiative because we feel that value in exchange for biases. If the teacher knows that his child is playing ball and he can take care of himself, he will be calm. If the policeman knows that, oh, his singer, his son is David Doe. You know, there are many David Doe's in rural environments. Why don't we have opportunities, youth development centers? Why don't we convert the sports centers? Why is somebody not running? Why is somebody not getting paid? Why are we not creating a spirit of competitive, competitive nature across our local, state, and federal organizations where you know, people are playing? I own a football club. I've been playing the league for almost that many years. I've never gotten the peanut by saying, oh, you own a football club. You have young people. This is your support. You know, so we need to look at other areas of streamlining value so that when somebody says, I earn this money, no matter what is offered to you, you know that government has also created other areas and also the NLC has also created other areas where its members can benefit from opportunities of government and policy direction of government. Now, the second strap line under the lead story on the Vanguard talks about the welfare of journalists. And uh, 
beyond the walkers much like prince seven has said when you look at the demographics of those captured under the civil service they are very minimal in terms of the large number of nigerians who are either artisans or do not mm -hmm. have a gainful employment even in the private sector how much more is it on the call to improve the welfare of certain persons in that regard you see it's i think it's just a general discussion and i think everybody should be compensated fairly you know i think the, that is the that is my caption there compensation fairly now we see the nlc and the government back and forth 57 400 this is the range is is too wide first of all i would suggest that um we have to understand that we're all nigerians government needs to understand that what they pay to their own staff or to their own employees is basically going to go right back into the system because they're going to go out to the markets things you know it, it's it just boosts economy for me i would suggest that and i know that things are kind of hard right now so that might be some of the reasons why the government is not trying to commit to certain to a price but i think we should also be very optimistic about where we are going as a nation you know i know mr president knows that before the end of his tenure people will be smiling and if he's that confident then i suggest that you know you you send a a, a shocking message to the nlc send them a, a figure that they themselves will probably not even expect from from you and then we work as a government we now go and do the work to make sure that they are paid you know the idea here is is a psychological thing you know we can't have the people who are supposed to be doing the work of the government busy thinking about how to take care of their, their sick child at home mm -hmm. You know what we're trying to, what we're giving them is peace of mind, so that they can focus on the the the, the 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 people that are outside of government. So we should make sure to take care of our, our our labor force. It's important that to even give you ownership of the part of your country. Yes, this is part of your country. We see this happen when it comes to the matters of government. We see them. You, have you not been seeing them? You've seen them. We've seen this happen. If they can be as very as eager and as and as deliberate with their own actions, that they should do the same for those who are not necessarily the ones making those decisions. So yes, I believe that something can be done. I believe that conversation can be had. And I believe that Labour should also understand the government's point of view. How do we, as a nation, as a, as a unit, because it's not Labour and government. No, it's Nigeria. Mm. You know, every two minutes we hear that there's a strike. This is not helping. It's not going to help the economy. It's not going to help the Nigerian people in the long run. So let's see how we can um, we can work together towards um, getting to that promised land. Well, in the hopes of getting to the promised land, I'll just get your thoughts before we call on this video as uh, I would like to take much of your time in preparation for your conference, mm -hmm. the Lagos-Calabar Coastal Highway. Many have talked about the fact that this part of the country has been long separated from the other, whilst they have a common good in terms of the trade and commercial activities that both can do to boost nigeria in lagos we have one of the biggest ports in nigeria it was also commissioned by president bola metini we will take a speech in a bit but what does this do for the calabar access of nigeria in terms of a 700 kilometer coastal highway it opens up it opens up you're talking about uh the end you're connecting the two ends you know because nigeria is a border um, Crossing State is a border state with um, Cameroon, and and there's a lot of coastal trade ongoing in that region. We are probably people blessed with so much. Look at the cocoa, look at the, our natural resources, you know, from mineral resources and all of that. And then it's not just going to be it's not just going to be a link, you know, for, to Calabar. You're also going to cross other states and other communities, you know. So connecting, we need to connect. It's called connecting economy. We must find a way to connect our economies together and connect our societies together. I think for me, it's one of the greatest decision that the government has made and not because I'm from Croatia but because I know what light it, how, how 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 bright it would be for the synergy of that road to connect Lagos and Nigeria you have the Calabar port that is not probably functioning so now you give you know preference to the port societies that come we can work together we can Lagos can play that that role you know that experienced role of of a, of a structured society that's experienced and don't forget you know that um, cross river state calabar also happens to be an old and very historical and plus played a very historical role in this country it shouldn't be forgotten so being uh, the one of the best capitals of nigeria and also connecting with another and let's also see how that also strengthens the, the roots between lagos to, to abuja too we must connect the cities together 
and then there will be a lot of um, um, more 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 visible um, economic development in that region. It's a good uh, step in the right direction. I'm, I must thank you, and not to take too much of your time for granting us audience on the program. I wish you the best ahead of the conference planned. Thank you. And we're hoping thank to you. have another session here to discuss that, and also. And we also used today. Yes. In, uh, in congratulating, you know, today is um, international. Um, um, menstrual hygiene day exactly and we know what that does you know we have an outreach and we are distributing parts on an initiative we call part the girl initiative so for me today is very critical our ladies our young girls must have confidence in themselves we must support them we must help to improve their healthy living and ensure that they stay healthy and teach them on tips and how they, they should get to know more about education is very important health and menstrual education is very important for the young girl child and I want to use today to congratulate and wish all the young girls and ladies out there that may they continue to enjoy easy flow, healthy flow, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Parting shots as well? Yeah, um, I also I think uh, today is also um, Children's Day. So yeah, yesterday was. Yesterday. So I just want to say to all the Nigerian children out there and across the globe, you know, happy Children's Day and God bless you all. Well, very much on our...